busy people getting fit in Fulcher, Texas. Our aim is to help you look better, feel better, and perform better as quickly as possible. I'm your host, Brian White, with Blue Eagle Fitness and Nutrition. Welcome. Hey, what's up, Clancy? Hey, I'm glad to be back. I've been <laughs> out for a few weeks. Yes, on a it's wondrous nice vacation. Yes. So this is our do-over attempt, and Clancy is trying to usurp me because I started the previous attempt yeah. with how she had just bathed and how I felt very special, and she didn't want me to bring that up again. Yet here well, we are. Well, I didn't. I didn't want people to think I don't bathe. I bathe in the morning before I go to the gym. But sometimes I don't get a shower until like until like four o'clock in the afternoon. So I was proud of myself. Okay. <laughs> I think it's before four. <laughs> uh, yes, it is before four. Congratulations. <laughs> hey, we are going to talk today about uh, workouts, um, how to prepare for them, how to think through them. Uh, this is July, and in the month of July, we do goal reviews. And I've had several goal review sessions where I've been asked a few questions about workouts and approaching workouts. And thought, hey, if I'm getting questions in these goal reviews, I should probably just go ahead and answer them in a met in a not in a metcon in a podcast, and we can share it with everybody. Sound good? I love it. Okay, and you can also, you know, we also want to hear what you do. So we'll start. We'll kind of go chronologically. Um, okay. First of all, let's start. Uh, when do you when what work at what class do you normally go to? Either 8.30 or noon. Okay. So a morning class or the yes. noon, no no later than the noon class. And I just want to bring that up no. because our first topic is going to be pre-workout. You know, so what do you, do you take a supplement? Do you eat? Do you drink? What, what, what do you do to nutritionally prepare for your workout? So if it's, it's, if it's the 8.30 class, I eat very little. I do eat maybe like an apple or I'm a big fan of hard boiled eggs. And so I'll eat maybe like two hard boiled eggs before the workout, but not a whole lot. And then I save my food for after I do not drink a pre-workout. I can't, I don't need the, um, it makes my heart race and I sure. just don't need that because I'm a sure. coffee drinker. So coffee's enough for me. Okay. So coffee an apple and I'm good to work out if it's 8 30 now if it's noon I have to eat something else before there but so it kind of depends on which class I go to I tried okay. going to the 4 30 though one time a couple times and it messed I couldn't get my eating synced up okay to have enough energy to do the 4 30 because I'm a morning person so like all my good energy is like early so that was hard okay so, yeah, so I'll work out at 8.30, noon, or 4.30. Those are my main classes, you know, based around because early morning I'm with the kids and in the evening I'm with the kids. <laughs> so mm -hmm. try to get in one of those three classes. And my nutrition is roughly the same no matter what class I go to. In the morning, I'm going to wake up and when I'm getting the kids ready, uh, I'm going to fix us breakfast. And for the most part, that's going to be like three eggs, two egg whites for me. Uh, a bowl of fruit and a piece of toast and it's going to be a 20 to 40 ounces of tea and it could be black tea or green tea a mixture of the two um uh, i love tea and so you know with the tea uh that's going to be roughly 80 to 100 milligrams of caffeine that i'm going to consume in the morning and that's whether i'm working out or not if you're, if anyone's taking a pre-workout or drinking an energy drink, uh, generally speaking, those aren't usually the best for you. And, and really the question that I, that I have to really kind of hammer this home is how many milligrams of caffeine are in your drink? And if you don't know the answer to that, uh, that's probably where the problem is. Okay. So if, we're, if you're going to take a pre-workout, um, the, the downsides to a pre-workout is they tend to put in too much caffeine, like 200 plus two, you should know one mm -hmm. it's unhealthy for us to be consuming more than 200 milligrams of caffeine in a day. And that's from any source. Um, roughly 80 milligrams is going to be in a eight ounce cup of coffee, six, 40 to 60 milligrams in tea. So you're talking about more than, or more than two and a half cups of, of coffee. 
with uh, an energy drink that has 200 or more milligrams of caffeine in it. I know there's one bang out there that has 400 milligrams of caffeine. Oh, it's insane. They also have a tendency no. to add ingredients that make your skin feel fuzzy or tingly or hot. Uh, and they add ingredients to make your heart race. And that's because they want to make you feel like you're getting more energy when in fact you're not. They're just trying to make you feel that way. So those extra ingredients are not going to allow you to perform better in a workout. Just a heads up. What about people who put like collagen and bulletproof coffees and all those other things that yeah, are yeah, popular? I mean, if we're adding collagen protein to coffee. I mean, that's just another way to consume protein. Bulletproof, we're adding butter or fat to it. I mean, those those have limited impact on uh, your performance. Um, they may make you feel better. They may make you feel fuller, um, but they're not going to impact your performance one way or the other. Yeah. Yeah. So, cool. you know, for any workout, no matter when we do it, we want to make sure we're hydrated. So if you're rolling out of bed, going into a 5 a.m. workout, you do want to make sure you're consuming at least 20 ounces of water um, going in. Um, that could be lemon water. It could be added some BCAAs, um, you know, anything like that to, to flavor it. Um, we, but we want to make sure that we're get, that we're hydrated and the same for, for coming off, you know, coming into the gym from work, you know, on your drive home or on your drive over, let's make sure that we're drinking plenty of fluids there too. And tell everybody what BCAAs are. Uh, branch chain amino acids. Um, they are thought, the reality is I have, I, I consume BCAAs, but mainly because of a little bit of the flavor, um, when I don't want to just drink water, but if you can imagine eating protein, like eating a chicken breast, um, is ideal. That's the whole, most whole, most wholesome, um, way to consume protein. Protein is made up of amino acids. So after eating that that chicken breast, the next thing, next form that we would want to, if the chicken breast make, makes us, you know, it's too hard on the stomach, we would want to consume protein powder. If protein powder is too hard on the stomach, then we would want to consume branch chain amino acids. So my daughter, who's a high level competitive swimmer, does multiple practices a day, needs to be consuming protein as much as possible. But between practices, you know, she can't eat two chicken breasts and then go swim for two hours. That just isn't going to work with her digestive system. So she's going to be eating quite a, or consuming quite a bit of BCAAs. Yeah. Got it. Yep. Uh, so that's for the pre-workout, you know, so hopefully you're hydrated and you have a little bit of food in your stomach. Um, even if it was just a snack, which is going to be true for most of us, um, whether we're, you know, rolling out of bed and going straight into the gym or going into the gym from work. And that's okay. That's okay. Um, okay. So now you're, you're, you're hydrated, you're nourished, you're coming into the gym three, two, one, go. We're starting the warm up, right? And we always, your coach is going to lead you through a warm up. but I wanted to highlight in this conversation that if you have something in particular that's bothering you, then we want to make sure we address that during the warm up. So if, if, even if we're doing lower body, but maybe later in the Metcon, we're doing thrusters and going up overhead. Um, we want to make sure if you're having shoulder issues, we want to make sure we are addressing those in the warm up. So definitely, uh, uh, you know, we've had one guy in particular, he's since moved away, um, but he was in the gym about four or five years ago. And he was great at knowing what he needed to do in the warm up uh, to get himself warm. He had significant glute and lower back issues. And he always made sure that he was warming up his glute and low back, even when the rest of the class wasn't necessarily focused on those two body parts. Um, so if anyone is, you know, having issues, their legs are maybe are particularly sore or shoulder issues or hip or ankle mobility, maybe we're, we're working on that more than the rest of the class in the warm up. Have you yeah, ever? Definitely. Have you ever had, you know, a class continue on with their normal warm up and you were warming up your own in your own specified way before? Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I know myself and I know, you know, what like right now I'm working on rehabbing my lower back. And so I know how to kind of work around it today. I had a, one of my athletes 
um, she can't do any upper body. So I said, let's pretend like we're just wrapping you in cellophane and we're just going to do all lower body. And you know, you know yourself. So it's important to listen to yourself. And, you know, I think some people are inclined to be rule followers and they want to do what you say, yep. but if it's going to hurt you, please don't do that. Yeah. You know, speak up and say, I can't do this. This hurts my shoulder, you know, or this hurts my back. And yep. that's fine to say that, you know. Yep. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So we've gotten through the warm up and now we have a workout to do. So when we see the workout, you'll notice that there are usually four different stages, four different levels. The first is RX. Now, do you know what RX stands for? That's the prescribed. <laughs> that is prescribed. I, it's Latin. So it's like a, uh, for a pharmacy that's rx right <laughs> would be for a pharmacy it's latin that stands for as prescribed okay and and that's just a way generally speaking we should never do a workout that is harder than as it is prescribed or as written right um you know so if the workout calls for us to do bar muscle ups we don't need to be doing some complex of chest to bar pull ups, toast bar into a bar muscle up, right? That's ridiculous. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but if we can't do a bar muscle up, then we might want to tailor the workout. And the next one, level three, L3, that might say like a, uh, a burpee pull up. Um, that might be our how we're going to scale the bar muscle up on that day. Um, and then L2 might be, um, might be, uh, jumping pull-ups that might be, and then L1 might be ring rows. Okay. So, uh, your coach is obviously going to have an opinion and let you know his or her opinion on how you should do this workout. But the first thing we want to consider is we want you to choose a scale or tailor the workout. So maybe we're going to lower the weight, right? If we're doing 95 pound thrusters and that's your one rep max, but we have to do 45 of them, right? So we need to do fewer or less weight. We want you to choose a weight that you, first of all, that you can finish under the time cap. Okay. So if we're doing a workout called Fran, which is a 21 reps of, 21 reps in round one, 15 reps in round two, and nine reps in round three of thrusters and pull-ups and 95 pounds for the gentlemen, 65 pounds for the ladies, but we have a five-minute time cap, right? We're not, and you're in 95 pounds is your one rep max on the thruster, or sorry, 65 pounds for the ladies. What weight would you do, Clancy? Uh, right now or on a normal day? On a normal day. Um, I would probably do 40, 45. Okay. 45 pounds. And then mm -hmm. you don't have 45 pull-ups. So, no. uh, how many, what would you do for the pull-ups? I would probably, I would probably do jumping, jumping pull-ups. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm going to do the, the, the workout as it's written. So as prescribed, I'm going to do 21 thrusters 21 pull-ups 15 thrusters 15 pull-ups nine pull nine thrusters nine pull-ups at 95 pounds and you are going to be right beside me doing 45 pound thrusters and jumping pull-ups correct yep. perfect perfect and i think if we both do that then we can fit under the five minute time cap now if the time cap were 10 minutes uh i could actually uh go heavier um, if that were an option, um, but if the, you know, and you, you could go heavier, right? You could go 55 pounds, um, break up the thrusters into yeah. more sets, take more rest in between and, and you would still fit under the time cap. But if the time Correct. cap were three minutes, you and I neon need to reduce the weight, <laughs> right? And maybe we're just doing the barbell at that point. Right. Yeah. And the same is true for going too light. You know, there's been times when I have finished well under the time cap. If it was a 10 minute and I finished in seven while well, I went too light, probably could have. 
Yeah. So Added great point. Weight. Great point. So <laughs> at what point do you know that you went too light? Generally speaking, you it's a great, great example. In a 10 minute, if the time cap is 10 minutes um, and you are not doing, if you're doing RX, then just go as fast as you can. And it is what it is. Um, we don't want, generally, we don't want you to do more than RX. Um, but if you're going to reduce the weight or, or make the workout easier for you overall, we still would prefer you to finish uh, within, let's say, 20% of the time cap. So if the time cap is 10 minutes, then we would like for the workout to be tailored such that you finish somewhere between 8 and 10 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, so if you're finishing in 6 to 7, then then you made it too easy. Right. Just something to keep in mind. Yeah, definitely. I've had that yeah. happen to me before and it's like, oh, I should have, you know, and that's, that's comes with like the pre-planning and thinking about what you're doing ahead of time. That's where that comes in handy, you know, and also yeah. keeping your record of your results from last time. You know, if you kept a note yes. from last time and you know, you know, I could have gone heavier than put that, have the coach put that in your notes. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Yep. And sometimes you'll see in my notes, it's, it says should have gone heavier. Uh, and other times in my notes, <laughs> I have one workout in particular that I really crushed like three years ago. Um, and now all of my notes since then say, how in the world did, <laughs> did I get that result? <laughs> because I don't think it's possible. <laughs> did I lose count? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> And I don't remember what the workout is called, but there's definitely a workout in there where my notes, um, That's awesome. every time the coach pulls them up, they laugh. Um, <laughs> before we got on this call, you wanted to make sure we talked about our mental approach to a workout. So what did you mean by that? Yeah. So I think it's really important because I know we have a lot of our athletes who look at the workout prior to coming in to the gym. And so they're thinking about it. And then we've got others who have no idea what the workout's going to be and just show up and, oh, today's, you know, burpees. And so there's, you know, I think it's important either whether you're on the side of, you know, you come in knowing we're doing rope climbs and you're fully, you know, dressed out for rope climbs, or if you're the person that had no idea and you wore shorts that day yep. and ankle socks, you know, I think it is important to have bring your mental uh, side to the workout because we can tend to overthink it and freak out in some cases. And, or on the other side, we, we don't have any plan at all. We're just winging the whole thing and we don't really get as much out of it as we could have. And so I guess what I meant by that is just kind of having uh, some sort of plan going in so that you can have success, feel good about what you did uh, when you leave the gym. And, you know, that's it. Mostly those two things, you know, it's yeah. having a plan. I was having a conversation earlier today, in fact, about up making sure that we have good notes uh, in our, in Wattify for people to read to give them, I know like on Saturday we had a 25 minute workout and the very first sentence in the notes was don't, don't start too fast. This is a workout where three, two, one, go, and you're going to want to go. Pew! And that's going to last for about two and a half minutes <laughs> until you realize that you're going to have 22 and a half minutes left and you don't have anything left in the tank. So, uh, you know, that would be, that would be an example. Um, we we try to make sure our notes are, are good for that. Um, mm -hmm. if we don't have notes, then, you know, it workouts are math problems, right? So if we go back and start talking about Fran, uh, it's 21 59 of pull-ups and thrusters. That's nine, that's 45 reps of pull-ups and 45 reps of thrusters. That's 90 reps total. Okay. So if you do one rep a second, you can get done in a minute and a half. Hmm. If it takes you two seconds, it's going to take you three minutes, three seconds, four and a half minutes, four seconds, six minutes. 
right? So we can start looking at this and going, okay, if it takes me, if I have a nine minute time cap, that's six seconds per rep. Yeah, I think I can do one rep every six seconds, um, you know, at 95 pounds and with me doing pull-ups. But if we have a six minute time cap, I might go, hmm, it's going to be tough. <laughs> it's going to be tough. I think I might be able to do one rep every four seconds. Um, it's going to be tough. Um, but let's let's give it a shot. Let's give it a shot. But if it's if the time cap is is five minutes, I'm going to go, mm, nope, not possible. I can't do one rep every three seconds, especially on those thrusters. I'm going to have to reduce the weight. Um, so that I can keep moving, right? Or, and if I can't, if I don't right. have my butterfly pull-ups, I, I may need to go over to jumping pull-ups. If, if, if what I was doing before were strict pull-ups, but I've only got five minutes to get in 45 reps of pull-ups, now I need to know that I need to do jumping pull-ups. Well, and I think it's important too, with something like thrusters or deadlift, when you're under a time crunch, that you're safe and you're being smart. Cause I've seen people race out of the gate on some of those lifts and their form is horrible and they end up hurting themselves. And so I think that's where coaching comes in, you know, where the coach is paying attention. Thankfully we have great, I feel like we have great coaches who pay attention, but I think it's just important to be smart about what you're going to do, especially on a, a time cap like that, uh, where you're going or where you're going for time. And it's yeah. those quick, you know, the quick five minute, seven minute workouts, you know, our form can go bad pretty quickly if we're not careful. Yeah. And there are times when the coach just steps in and, you know, you finishing a workout is not as important as you being safe and able to come in the next day. Right. And there, there are times certainly when I'm coaching and I've seen an athlete and they're going super hard, which I and given all effort, which I sincerely appreciate. Um, but if we're, if we're on the, if we're getting, making, you know, moving in the direction of injury, then I'll, I'll just step in and, and step on the bar, you know, so they, Hey, let's take a breather. Let's mm -hmm. relax. Let's get our heart rate down just a little bit. Let's get muscle fatigue uh, recovered a little bit and then let's start again. And we may not finish the workout at that point, but we take it as a learning and we stay safe. And I think our warmups are really tailored to that and have really, we've done a good job of keeping our athletes healthy and safe because our warmups are pretty thorough and we're, yeah, you know, we, we're we protecting shoulders. <laughs> we're pretty, you know, we're, we're pretty protective of our shoulders and our athletes um, warming it safely too. So I appreciate that. Awesome. Well, thank you for your time today, Clancy. I appreciate it. Absolutely. My pleasure. Glad to have you back. Thanks. I'm glad to be back. <laughs> okay. We'll talk next time. Okay. <laughs> Take care. Bye. You can get every episode of Busy People Getting Fit wherever you listen to your podcast or on YouTube. You can also reach us at busypeoplegettingfit.com. Until next time, thank you for listening.